everyone welcome to modern application development part 2 so in order to give a demonstration of how celery can be used on the replit platform i am just going to walk through a simple example where we are using a package manager called nix in order to set up and run a redis server right now to be frank the usage of nix and how it is to be used and how you can actually manage a lot of packages with it in the user space and so on is probably overkill it is not really something that you explicitly need to know in order to develop applications right so this is most definitely what could be considered a slightly advanced topic but especially for people who are interested in application development moving forward knowing about such systems helps you in setting up larger scale environments that can be done and in a reproducible manner okay so some of these things are worth sort of at least being aware of even if you don't use them a, a whole lot okay in this particular case this replit that i'm walking through has a few different things of course it has a readme which gives a little bit of information about nix right how to get started with nix and so on right but that is more sort of general information from replit unrelated to the question of how to actually run the program that we are interested in so for us what we have is there are a few important files right there is a new something called a config file which is named just dot replit right which has a little bit of information out here right it basically says run equals sh start dot sh right so all that it's saying is when i run this replit okay this is the command to run so you would normally wonder when i click on the run command run button right in any replit how does it know what to do right by default if you have set up your replit as let's say a python application it runs main.py if you have set it up as a html plus css application it will open index.html right so those are some kind of defaults that replit uses but this is a new kind of uh, application a replit that we are creating right which is a nix based application so we have to explicitly tell it what we want it to do and what we uh, say is run this shell script what is inside that shell script is that it will basically kill off any pre existing versions of either redis anything to do with redis or anything to do with python or this shell script itself and then finally it will just run this command redis server in the background okay so this minus demonize yes is basically saying you run it in the background now where did redis server come from right because this is not something that's normally installed on any linux system which means that i must have had a way by which i can explicitly run it and install it in this case there is also one file called replit.nix right which is sort of the crucial thing that we have here you don't need to worry about the syntax you don't need to know about what exactly is happening here the important thing is that just by having this replit.nix file a few things get automatically installed into this replit one of them is python 3.9 in addition to that the flask module for python 3.9 the celery module for python 3.9 and a few other packages python packages including ones to communicate with redis one for generating http requests one for parsing rss feeds actually this requests and feed parser and date util are not really used in this code right but i just put it in there for it was uh, copied from the example that replit was using and they were present over there so i've just left them in case we want to build on this code i'm also adding on another package called tmux which is a terminal multiplexer it will allow me to run multiple things at the same time using a single shell and most importantly this package called redis right so what is redis that's the one that actually has the redis server and the redis cli so what this is doing in other words is that any time i open up this system right and if i click on run it runs the start.sh and it has installed all the packages corresponding to this nix file that i have over here okay which means at this point in time i now have redis server available to me in the shell okay so i can basically go open up the shell and 
this is where the terminal multiplexer becomes useful because what I do is I basically just run tmux and it creates you can see this green line at the bottom over here which basically is some kind of it's like a window frame right it's telling me that there are multiple different windows available to me once again explaining how tmux works is out of scope of what I can cover over here but it's worth understanding especially if you find yourself needing to remote login to a system and actually run multiple commands over there okay so what can i do first things first i can check whether i already have a redis server running and sure enough i find that there is actually a redis server already running in the background why did that happen because i clicked on the run button and it ran that program start.sh so that's good to know what I have over here is now there is this file tasks.py right and in tasks.py what I find is I have imported celery and I have created a new flask well it's not a flask application this is just a pure python application right I'm not really trying to use flask at this point so this demonstration that I'm giving here is just with python celery and nothing to do with flask you could very easily add flask to it but that's not what i'm going to do in this demo what does it do it just basically creates a celery instance it gives it the name tasks which is the same as this module tasks.py that i'm currently running with right and there are two pieces of information the message broker right which is used for sending messages between any python code that you write and the celery workers that are going to receive those messages and work with them I say I point that to the Redis instance that I have, which I've already started. Same way, there is also something called a backend. What is the backend for? As and when a task gets completed, the result of that task needs to come back. That also needs to be sent back through some kind of a database or some system. I'm using the same Redis for that as well. Okay. I could have done this with RabbitMQ, in which case I would have needed to add RabbitMQ as one of the dependencies and actually start it up ahead of time. But since Redis can handle both the broker and the backend, I'm just using Redis for simplicity. Okay. Now, how does Celery actually work? You need to define certain tasks, right, using this decorator at app.task. What is a task over here? Something completely trivial, just add two numbers. Right? So in practice, of course, this would never be a task because like I said earlier, the time required for actually executing this task is much less than the time required for pushing things onto the queue, pulling them off the queue, executing them, pushing the result back and so on. Okay. So now that I have this, right, what I can do is that I can actually run a command, celery, right, and tell it to... Uh, essentially create work in, uh, or rather instantiate workers from this module tasks right and i'm going to give a log level just so that i get additional debugging information or additional information printed on the screen and what i have is that celery is supposed to start up and yes, you can see that it has started up and you know, some amount of information because after all I had put it in info logging. So it says that it has now got tasks.add, right, which came up from this. So in other words, what it did was it took this tasks.py, right, because I had given minus capital A tasks.py, that's just the standard syntax of Celery. And what it is doing is it has started workers. Right, a worker or multiple workers that part is dependent on some configuration parameters. I'm just going with defaults at this point, right? So the workers are now running over there. How do I make use of this, right? So, what are all the things that are now running in the background? There's a Redis server that is running in the background, and there is a Celery worker that has just been started by me over here, right? And the Redis server is going to act both as the message broker and the message backend to take messages from my Python code into Celery and to get the results back, back from Celery into my Python code, okay? How do I make use of this? Let me go ahead and create, oops, not in this, over here. I can go back to the tmux and create a new shell over there, okay? And I'm just going to 
start an interactive Python terminal where what I will do is I will import everything from tasks.py. What is there to import? It would just import this one function add. Okay, which means that I should now be able to call add. Right? And what is add? It basically says add is a task. Okay. Can I directly call add? Well, it says it's missing arguments. What happens if I give add 4 comma 5? It gives me the answer immediately. Okay. So in other words, I can use this directly as a function. But it becomes more interesting when I sort of say r is equal to, let's say, add dot delay and I give it two arguments. Okay. So what is happening now? Now I'm saying don't execute it immediately. Push it onto the queue. Okay. And the moment I do this r is equal to add dot delay, I find that r comes back. I can go back to the shell the terminal in which I was running the salary worker and I find that there is some information out here, right? It says that pool worker has been a new pool worker has been forked, right? Fork is the term that is used in order to create a new thread. It ran tasks.add and it succeeded in well 13 milliseconds. Okay. And the answer also has been received. It is in fact logged the information. That's because I have given a high level of logging over here. The answer that came back from this function was the value 11. Okay. But if I go back to my original terminal, the value 11 never got printed out. Why is that? Because if I look at R, R now has this result, but it doesn't show me the result by default. Okay. I can get that result by doing R dot get. At that point, it shows me, yes, this was the result that R got. Okay. So why was this useful? Obviously, like I said, for adding two numbers together, it's not useful. But let's say that this was a much more long running operation. I could have basically let it go to sleep, right? And come back with this answer, right? I can also do one more thing out here, which is I can explicitly tell the system to execute only after a certain amount of time, right? So I could, for example, say add dot call asynchronously, right? Give it two parameters and tell it to run only after five seconds. Okay. Now what happens? R came back immediately, but now I can look at something called R dot status and it says pending. Once again, look at R dot status and after five seconds, it now shows success. Okay. So instead of five seconds, if I had given 15 seconds, I would have been waiting a long more to get a result back. Right. And now when I get the result from R, I find that indeed, yes, it is 35. Okay. I could also have just made this a long running operation, right? So what I have done now is I have added a little bit more of a sleep operation into this task. Okay. And I continue doing the same way, right? From tasks, import star. And now what I would like to do is just call add, right? Or let's say that if I now directly try doing add 4 comma 5, right? It just goes to sleep for 5 seconds, right? And eventually prints the result. Instead, what I could do is I could do add dot delay. twelve comma twenty three right and r comes back immediately and I can now look at r dot status pending pending success okay and at that point when I get the result I find that indeed it has got the correct answer so why did I put in that sleep five over there just to emulate a long running operation right in other words if my function takes a long time to come back all I'm saying is that by using add dot delay over here I have assigned it to the salary task queue, but the functionality immediately returns. So R comes back instantaneously, right? Which means that I can now store that R value, the async result, right? Just some kind of ID corresponding to that result. All that I need to do is have it somewhere else. And eventually I can look for the result that came back from it. Okay. I don't need to wait over there until it has actually finished execution. 
So this was a fairly simple example of how you can just use Celery for running asynchronous tasks. Obviously a very contrived example, but just for demonstration purposes essentially, right? And of course, as you can see, it allows you to use Redis both for the backend as well as the broker. And the big sort of slightly confusing part over here is the fact that when you want to use it on a platform like Replit, you do have to do something that's a bit non-trivial, right? Use something like Nix in order to install these packages and so on. On the other hand, hopefully at this point, you know, the uh, most of you would have your own systems running uh, with a Linux or similar kind of setup, right? Where you can actually run all of this. You could actually have a Redis server, you could have a Celery worker being created, and you could then run your own Python code directly on the system. The one catch is that Celery does use the fork process in order to create new threads. What that means is it does not natively work on something like Microsoft Windows, right? And in order to get it running, you could use something like the Windows subsystem for Linux, or there could be some other POSIX compatible environments that are there that on which you might be able to run this. The preferred method would probably be either WSL, Windows subsystem for Linux, or have a virtual machine within which you have Linux installed and get it working. Now, why is this? Primarily because you'll find that as you get into managing more complex servers with multiple different processes that need to interact with each other, the Linux kind of environment is generally speaking easier to manage and more powerful in terms of what it gets you, which is why we are sort of sticking to it here and it's well worth knowing as well.